In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ole and Lena Olson were uh, thinking about going to Ole's 50-year class reunion. They were getting up there in the years a little bit. So they decided they would do it. And they went there, and when they got arrived, uh, Lena says, Oh, there's that Helga Halverson. She said, You know, she had such a plan about how her life was going to go and everything. I just wonder how she did then. And Ole says, Well, go talk to her. I'll talk to the guys over here. So she went over, and they kind of renewed acquaintance. And finally, Lena says, You know, uh, Helga, you... You, you, had, uh, you had a real plan for how your life was going to go. Uh, how'd that turn out then? And Helga says, well, really pretty good. She said, I uh, was married four times. And uh, Lena said, gee, that doesn't sound so great. And she says, well, yeah, really, it was, it was good. Uh, she said, uh, the first one um, was a millionaire, and he died. And then the next one was an actor, and I had to divorce him. And then the third one was a preacher, and he died. And then that guy over there is my husband that I got now. He's a funeral director. <laughs> and Lena says, so, so how is that all according to plan then? She says, well, the first one was, you know, for the money. And uh, no, two was for the show. Three was to get ready. And four to go. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that bad. That's the way Lena is. I don't, don't blame me. <clears throat> uh, in our gospel lesson for today, we have a couple of old people also who are ready to go. Their names are Simeon and Anna. And they were there because the Holy Family had arrived. Mary and Joseph were very devout people. Jesus had been circumcised on the eighth day, according to the Law of Moses. Mary had the uh, rite of purification, and Jesus was being presented on the 31st day. So all of this was, was uh, really devout kind of stuff. But Simeon had been told that he was not going to die before he saw the Lord's Christ. And then the Holy Spirit urged him, when the Holy Family came for the presentation, they urged him, and then Simeon went over, and he was able to hold the, the, the Messiah in his arms. And he... Uh, he burst forth into a uh, kind of extolling and praising God. Lord, now let my, you, your servant depart, for I have seen your salvation, and so forth. And uh, he was, he was pretty, pretty excited. Basically what he said was, I can go now. I've seen it all. I've seen enough. And some of you will remember, um, this, was, uh, this particular thing is in our hymnal. Well, it was about two hymnals ago. Uh, it was called the, in Latin, the Nunc Dimittis. Do you remember that? Now I can depart. And, uh, well, you can sing it along with me. You'll remember. It's from a couple of hymnals ago. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. See, a lot of you knew it. The Nunc Dimittis, now I can, I can go now. I've seen it all. I'm ready to go. And I was thinking about this. This, instead of Presentation Sunday, I really think maybe we should just call this Old Folks Sunday. That this should be a celebration of the old folks in the congregation. And by golly, we got a lot of them. So I, I, think, it's, I think it's appropriate. Uh, Old Folks Sunday, because when I, I have watched a lot of people who were preparing for death, who were, you know, headed, uh, circling the drain, as it were, and I've seen a lot as a hospital chaplain in nursing homes and in shut-ins and, and other hospitals, whatever, and there, there's something that I noticed, and that is that generally speaking, people of faith are not that worried about death. They're pretty at peace and pretty calm. And uh, then on the other hand, I've seen people who have no faith background at all, and I've seen that look of terror. And uh, uh, Dondra, you're a nurse. You've seen that, have you not? Yeah. They get that look, that, you know, kind of, I don't know where I'm headed next look. And Simeon and Anna were at peace. And I think generally... 
Christians can be at peace too. Uh, I think of my father, who, <laughs> stop me if you've heard this before, Deborah. Uh, my father, who, they, they, he was 90 years old on his birthday, and one of the old neighbors came and said, Well, Bill, you made her to 90. You're going to try for 100? And my dad said, Heavens no, I didn't even want to make it to 90. <laughs> and then later on, he talked to me, and he said, uh, I don't know what the Lord's piddling around with. I can't eat anything, I can't walk, and my friends are all dead. What's the point? I would like to get on to something better. And then he added later on, he said, I don't think I'm going any place worse than I am now. I'd like to get there. I said, well, when you, you, you can ask the Lord what he was piddling around with. When you, when you, well, I'm going to, he said, and I'm sure he did. <laughs> Pretty straightforward fellow. What was the Lord piddling around with? He was ready to go. I, since, since Simeon and Anna, I haven't seen anybody else that was as ready to go. Anna came up, the old prophetess. She praised the Lord. She was joyful. She said, this is redemption of Jerusalem. And Simeon had great words to say. I'm sure that the Holy Family had a lot to talk about on the way home. But if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, mm, I don't know, Pastor Cal, about this death and dying thing, if I'm all that fired up for it. And, and I am. I'm my father's son. And uh, I'm, you know, as you know, I'm on the early checkout plan. Uh, I'm not interested in living long, just living well, and then boom, go, get there. But if you're sitting there thinking, what, do I not have enough faith? Because I'm not, I'm not as excited about this as you are, Pastor Cal, and as your dad was, certainly. If you're thinking that, uh, I have some good news for you. I don't, I don't think that Christians generally are that worried or afraid of death. I think what we're afraid of is the process of dying to get there. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, is this going to be a lingering, suffering, horrible thing where I'm trapped in my own body and I can't say anything, but I'm miserable? Is it going to be that? The process of dying to get to death is, I think, what we're scared of. It was just, we're dead. Uh, you know, we're, we're comfortable with that. We know where we're going. We know whose we are. We're children of God. Blessed assurance is the hymn. Blessed assurance. Quit doubting. Are you a child of God? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? You're ready to go. But I think there's the other thing that plays into that, and that is just the fear of the unknown. You know, a lot of times we'll have things that we don't know about. They might be better for us, but, you know, we don't know. And so what I've discovered in life is that the fear of the unknown is oftentimes more powerful than the pain of that which we get used to. As my dad said, I'm not going anywhere worse than here. Why not get there? Well, you don't know about that, that fear of the unknown. When I was young, I used to think that the church was the game for young people because they had all the energy and vitality and vision and all that. But... Um, I'm beginning to think maybe what moves the church forward is the old people. This being Old People Sunday, you know, uh, yes, we may have the aches and pains and swelling and what I have called mops, mysterious old people stuff. That You, you know, you wake up and your ankle won't work and then a half hour later it's fine. And you go, what the heck was that? Okay, we may have the mysterious old people stuff and we may have, you know, our mind you know, confusion and forgetfulness and whatever. And it may feel like our body and our mind have both sold us out. And yet it is the older people who are the ones who take the list and look who's on the prayer list and pour and pray over each one. It is the older people who make the casseroles when somebody has died in another family. It is the older people who go sit in the hospital with a friend and just hold their hand and give their presence and be with them. It is the older people who are in the pews, for that matter. Uh, and the last Sunday we had a little icy rain over at St. John earlier in the morning. And I thought, oh, I hope those old women don't show up. They'll get killed out there. And, but of course, they were the ones that showed up. All the young people stayed home. It's the old people that show up. The ones that you go, oh, man. I sent people out in the parking lot to escort them in. I said, we can't have broken hips out here on a Sunday morning. It's the old people who are doing that. It's, it's the old people who start stuff up in the back when you're not supposed to. It's, 
<laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the older people who, uh, who really make things go. And I, I've, I've discovered, too, that when we get older, we have a much clearer notion of what it is in life that really is important. As we get older, we can look back on our lives and say, this was the stuff I did that really has eternal significance. And this stuff over here that I did was just stuff over here that I did. Our values are sharpened. Our moral standards are cemented. We know what's right. We know what's wrong. And we, start, and we strive to do the right. So, Simeon and Anna, they were old folks who got to say, I, I, I've seen it all. I've seen all that I need to see. I've seen the Lord's Christ. I'm ready to go. And so are we. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.